Hey guys, Spencer here with 91 Barbecue and our good friends out at Harris Ranch reached out to us and asked us to go ahead and try some of their uh, beef out. I'm not the brisket whisperer, that would be my good friend Jeremy Yoder from Mad Scientist Barbecue, you guys know him as. That's what it's all about. And Jeremy's here to show me and the rest of you how to trim a brisket properly. And then contrary to tradition and Jeremy, I know this is gonna kill him, we're gonna use Naughty Rub just to see how it goes on brisket. And we're gonna cook this brisket, we're gonna see how it turns out. So Jeremy? Sure, so we're gonna do a traditional Texas style trim, but we're gonna do an, a non-traditional seasoning on this. So this, uh, I have smelled these cattle before in the past. I have not ever cooked any Harris Ranch beef. So I'm not a, a loyalist to any brand, but I am a loyalist to quality. So let's pull this guy out, we'll shape it up and get it ready to go on the smoker. And all that's gonna be left is a trim. All right, so first thing I'm gonna look at is this flat. This flat is really thin. I use the rule of thumb for this. If it's not as thick as my thumb. Uh, Your thumb or my thumb? Uh, that'd be a rough <laughs> rule for you. <laughs> I don't even know how to react to that after that gator incident. Um, yeah, rule of thumb, if it's not thicker than my thumb, I cut it off. So if you're merciless when you're trimming a brisket, that means when it comes time to slice it on the board, you can slice everything and serve it. You don't have to be picking through different slices and throwing some away. All of it is something that you can be proud of. Uh, we don't have any big gouges on the top of this, which is nice. So I'm just gonna start by selecting where I want this thing to end. Something about right there. Ooh, this is a good knife. I'm, <laughs> I just sharpened is a, it. Is this a custom knife? It's a Victor Knox. Really? Yeah. Wow, okay, impressive. So what you guys can see is right here at the end, it's nice and thick, but it gets thinner as it goes out to the side. And so I'm gonna kind of round this off and try to get all of it thick enough that it's gonna survive a long brisket cook. Because for us to build the bark and flavor that we're really after when we're cooking a brisket, what we wanna do is uh, make sure that we cook it long enough on the smoke and to make sure everything survives, we wanna make sure it's all thick. Now it's time to get rid of the mohawk. The mohawk is this little flappy thing here. And for a lot of backyard cooks, what I'm about to do will look absolutely sacrilegious, but I'm gonna get up here and trim all of this off. Seems wrong, but I'm telling you, you'll produce a better product in the end. And this can shine in other applications. You can use it for sausage, you can use it for burgers, you can use it for any number of other things. But for this brisket, we're gonna smoke for probably 12 hours. It's not gonna shine, let it shine somewhere else. Then we get this shape. I'm gonna come make a big cut here. And eventually, we're gonna get about the right shape. I'll show you that in a second. A lot of people talk about briskets being aerodynamic. Well, aerodynamic kind of, sort of, but really, briskets aren't generating lift. What they're doing is they're cooking in a hot environment. So the more surface area you have, the more things are gonna dry out. So we're just trying to minimize surface area. We want long, smooth, round edges. So any kind of sharp corners, you're gonna to wanna to trim those and round them off so that it's not super exposed to the hot air while you're cooking or the hot air when Spencer's talking. Either way, you wanna smooth it all out and then you wanna trim the fat on the top, maybe about a quarter of an inch. So it words of exact. wisdom, Jeremy. Words of wisdom, not hot air. <laughs> She's shoving fun about me. I think you get a mix of both. But either way, it's a good time. Hanging out at the Naughty Wood Ranch is always fun. And the scenery is beautiful. Also, I'd recommend sticking your brisket in the freezer before you trim it up. Because that way, yes. all the fat is hard and you can cut right through it. And it doesn't get all gloopy. But it's all good. We'll try to get this nice and even and we'll season it up. Hopefully by the end of this, this thing's gonna all kind of look black like a meteorite. So I just wanna check the end, make sure this fat's not too thick. And so apart from this little scalp that's kind of like the size of my index finger, I think we're looking pretty good. So, Spencer, yes. how are you gonna season it up? I'm just gonna take Naughty Rub and I'm gonna liberally put it on there and that's it, pretty simple. So yeah, so we're just gonna and I think the sugar in here is gonna help the bark too. Yeah. Yeah, so you'll have a lot of flavor on the outside, plus add the smoke flavor, plus add the beef flavor. So I have a feeling it's gonna be good. This is our rub, Naughty Rub. Um, in fact, my marketing uh, director, Stephanie, just had entered this last year into the 
American Royal Rub Competition. I, oh, okay. I had no idea. Yeah, how'd and you do? Brian from Mad Mutts calls me one day and he's like, dude, I'm like what? You're killing it. What do you mean? You just placed fifth in the world in rub. I'm like, what are you talking about? I had literally had no idea. I said, what are you talking about? Did you enter a rub? He goes, no, you guys did. I'm like, what? And then <laughs> Stephanie came running in. She heard the conversation like, oh yeah, I entered that. And so we ended up placing fifth in the American Royal last year with it. Um, and so here, here it goes. Okay, now that we've got it seasoned up, we're gonna let this sit because of, I'm gonna put this on late tonight, about midnight, so that we can have this for lunch tomorrow. It's a small brisket, so it's not gonna take 14 hours. I think this thing will be done in eight hours, something like that. Probably. So if I go on it anywhere from 10 to midnight, we get it cooked, we'll get it off, we'll let it rest for four, three or four hours, and it'll be ready to serve at lunch. And it ought to be fantastic. So we'll see you in the morning. What you guys don't know is that uh, Spencer is a very early riser. So sometimes when I'm in Kentucky, Eastern time, I'll get a call at like 6.30 in the morning. I'm like, what? It's 3.30 in California. Why is this guy awake? But uh, yeah, so you're gonna check it out early in the morning. You're gonna wrap it in anything. You're just gonna go unwrap the whole time. I think I'm gonna go unwrap the whole time and see what happens. All right, I like it. So I'll be here tomorrow and we can eat this together. There you go. Awesome. We'll see you in the morning. You want me to talk about it? You want to talk about it? Oh, I, I, either way. You want me to do it? Well, I'll intro about all the wrecks. Okay. So, we've come off with our brisket. I put it on at about midnight last night. I set a fairly low temp to be safe. I went to bed. I got up at 4 a.m. It was stalled out, uh, or it was under, it was really, really low in its heat. So, I bumped it up to 220. I went from 200 to 220. I came out. Went to work for a little bit, came out about 6.30 to check on it, and I had a flame out in my pellet grill in my Memphis. And so I fixed that, I cleared the fire pot, got all that, added pellets, did all that, fired it back up, walked away, came back 20 minutes later. And I had an inferno because when it fired, the, the initial firing up of the pellet grill caught all the rendered fat that had dripped down onto the fire pot. and. The reader read 697 degrees, and when I opened it, it was it was on. So we have whole burnt bottom end. And so then I went to pull it off, and of course, with it being so hot, I dropped it. That never happened though. And then I we, don't know what you're talking yeah, about. And then we scooped it up, and here we are. And in spite of all that. It still is, I think, going to be, it won't be great, but it won't be the disaster it damn sure could have been. <laughs> yeah, so just looking at it, I think maybe just this edge could have been burnt. Like, the top is kind of crispy, which a lot of people really like, but the bottom still feels pliable. I think you're okay, so in spite of all the things that went wrong, I think it's still going to be all right. It smells really good. Okay. So uh, let's start I'm slicing you into cut it. it and see what happens. Just cut that big end off that's all burnt up. All right, so looking at this end cut, this part did get a little bit crispy on the bottom, but the fat on top is actually rendered pretty well, and there's still moisture in the meat. So that rendered fat that comes from the intramuscular marbling is still kind of there. So we won't know until we taste it, but it's actually looking pretty hopeful because this is where most of the damage would be done from uh, the thing catching on fire, but uh, let's keep slicing and, and, and taste it and we'll find out for sure. This fat is super rendered, it just squishes. The fat on top has rendered really well. This hasn't dried out. I mean, for the potential disaster that it could have been, this is actually remarkably good. <laughs> right. Like I said, even a blind dog finds one. Good job, Harris Ranch. Yeah. 
the, the shake, the shake, shake, shake. All right, already. so let's try an end cut and then some burn ends. That's gonna be dry. I don't think so. I think it'll be crunchy, but not bad. So there you go. I'll clean this guy up. What do you think? Well, it's not bad. A little bit dry. So we'll try this guy. All right, I'm gonna try this end cut. I mean, it really doesn't look that bad. I mean, compared to when you good. told me what happened, I was expecting you were just gonna have a big piece of charcoal and <laughs> have to chip away at it. Got them all. Let me tell you what, my eyes were pretty big when I saw them smoke and flames. <laughs> I don't know. That's maybe, exactly what happened to this. Maybe it's just a sign, like, you know, you've gotten your brisket will the be The brisket good today. gods were, yeah, were, in favor. were shining on me. Yeah, I mean, it's actually remarkably good. Awesome. Right. All right, so we discovered Harris Ranch beef. Good stuff. Naughty Wood Rub. Well, it's just called Naughty Rub, right? Yep, Naughty Rub. Naughty Always rub. a happy ending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also good, even on beef. But, uh, yeah, I mean, excellent job, I guess. Kind of. <laughs> no, Way to be lucky. Really. There you go. Just Way lucky. to be lucky. Just lucky. <laughs> let's, let's, let's be honest here. It was, this was just dumb luck. Thanks yeah. for coming out and doing that. Yeah, thanks for letting me try this. And cool. uh, for all of you guys out there, uh, if you don't know who Jeremy Yoder is, go to Mad Scientist BBQ on all the different social media pages, YouTube. And if you really wanted to learn how to do this, he's your guy. We appreciate him coming out and being a friend of Naughtywood. And uh, like he said, we don't have a professional relationship where we just happen to be two guys who happen to have a lot of common interests and hit it off and we like hanging out and barbecuing and shooting guns and doing fun stuff so you guys all out there yeah so um make sure to follow spencer and naughty wood on on instagram tiktok and everywhere naughty wood bbq um but yeah so it's just it's always a pleasure to be out here we get to do fun stuff and if i suggest let's uh cook a brisket for 24 hours and not touch it you're like all right let's do it so it's just a great time <laughs> and if i suggest let's try and wreck a brisket you're like okay <laughs> let's do it yeah why not <laughs> yeah. So, all right happy grilling